Good morning, everyone. So the first talk of the day uh, and first talk of the neuro uh, series is uh, SPECT brain imaging for known neurodegenerative disease. So I have nothing to disclose. So for next uh, 40 to 45 minutes, we'll be talking about the uh, introduction with basic relevance to SPECT brain imaging. And then we'll talk about the role of uh, cerebral perfusion in patients with epilepsy with the help of ictal and interictal SPECT perfusion exams. Then we'll talk about cerebral vascular reserve or cerebral vascular capacity using balloon occlusion test and DIMOX challenge test. And we'll also talk about the role of perfusion imaging as an adjunct to brain death evaluation. And last, we'll talk about the role of spec perfusion in brain tumors. So with the introduction, uh, so the basic principle behind the spec perfusion is that uh, the increase in the regional brain activity leads to an increased regional blood flow and cerebral glucose metabolism, and vice versa. If there is a decreased uh, activity, there will be a decreased perfusion and decreased blood flow. And these blood flow and glucose metabolisms are directly linked. Example, this is a human subject. The eye was stimulated with the checkered bow diagram, which results in stimulation of the visual cortex with resultant increased blood flow and increased glucose. So these both things are coupled together and directly related. So another important concept in brain imaging, whatever you're doing, CT, MRI, nuclear medicine, or various PET tracers, is the role of blood-brain barrier. It is a highly selective, semi-permeable border formed by the endothelial cells that lines the cerebral microvasculature and which separates the blood from the brain. So special thing about this blood-brain barrier is the tight junctions, which is uh, totally different in brain compared to other tissues. And this brain, blood brain barrier is altered or disrupted in many neuropathologies and tumors. So this is a diagram showing the blood brain barrier with tight junctions separating the blood and brain and how the various contrast and traces behave. For CT and MR contrast to go into the brain, you need to have the breakage of blood brain barrier. So you need to have disruption of blood brain barrier for CT and MRA contrast to light uh, go into the brain. Whereas for various spec perfusion tissues, they don't need blood-brain barrier breakage. They can, be, uh, they can diffuse along the blood-brain barrier with the help of, because they are lipophilic. And various uh, amino acid PET tracers and FDG, it also don't need breakage of blood bar barrier because they are taken by the help of transporters, blood transporters or amino acid transporters to the brain. So what are the ideal characteristics of a radio tracer for a brain imaging? So there are three basic requirements for either SPECT or PET for measuring brain function, metabolism, or cerebral perfusion. The first is its ability to cross blood-brain barrier. Then brain retention long enough to acquire images. And lastly is lack of redistribution because the images are usually acquired about, in cases of SPECT, one to four hours after injection, whereas in PET, usually about 30 to 45 minutes after injection. So you don't want the redistribution after injection. You want the activity at the time of injection. So the tissue should go in and get locked in into, into the brain.